that, uh, shake that, uh, pop that, uh, shake that, uh, bounce that, yeah, uh, shake that. I'm in this bitch serving face, ass and thighs, compliment my waist. These bitches hate, and that's a shame, cause I can see her lace. They smiles, got their mouth tied, and I can't relate. Walk in and I raise the rate. Hmm. I don't want no conversation, bitch, don't wanna conversate. Ain't no eating. You're now listening to Carefree Black Girl Podcast, where we discuss everything carefree, black, and girl. Welcome back, what ladies. Up, hey, hey. Burr, burr, burr. <laughs> sound effect. Yes, it's been a little minute. Happy to come in and join you guys. It's been a wild. It's a lot been going on. Wild yes. month and some change. <laughs> um, our world is upside down. Smiley face emoji right now. Like, very much so. Very, very much so. You know. Um, I I don't even think that we need to even discuss what we've been doing this past month because I feel like we've all, as a human race, have been on the same wavelength. Yes. Um, Yes, yes. It's it's crazy that we're here, but I feel like I'm I'm happy we're here. I'm happy we're in this space where we're all listening to each other, having Mm -hmm. these hard conversations. White people are having these conversations. It's a true revolution. It is. And it's looking like it's being televised, and I ain't mad yeah. at it. <laughs> Tweeted and televised. I ain't the, if the revolution got to be televised to pop off, then so be it, baby. Like, yes. But, yeah, you 100% right. Um, I got to agree. I think everybody is, you know, we all on the same page. We're all aware. We are all aware mm-hmm. of what we're doing, and hopefully everybody listening is, too. <laughs> yeah. Right? Most definitely. Um. So, uh, we have, so because everything has been so um, wild and crazy and intense and heavy, we definitely would like to dedicate our Carefree Black Girl of the Week to a amazing, strong, courageous um, sister of ours mm-hmm. and of the human race and soul that we unfortunately lost, um, Toyin Salau. Um, R.I.P. Baby girl. Absolutely. Um, she was a resident of Florida, mm-hmm. and I know that she had recently um, spoke out about her rapist on Twitter and uh, shared her truth and was very active in the protests that have been going on, as I know a lot of us have been. And I think that makes this story and this situation even more heartbreaking and chilling because it really we could see ourselves in her so much so much so yes and the fact that she was young i believe 19 um and her life was taken away from her um and i'm not sure of all of the details of this case and i'm not sure where the investigation is but we definitely want to share our thoughts our hearts Mm -hmm. our love with her her family and all of her friends and uh, carefree black girl we are with you and we care about you and we want everyone to know your name so thank you for being our carefree black girl of the week and standing up for what you believed in and being your true self and being carefree. Yes, 100%. Beautiful. That was beautifully said. Beautifully put. <clears throat> Definitely. Um, you know, it, it's such a wild time and, um, you know, it's just surprising some of the things that can happen while we're in the middle of this revolution, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, I want us to all just try to remain as positive as we can. And, you know, we have to think about, you know, women and people like her so that way we are doing what we need to do daily you know what i mean like we have to we we got to do this certain things in the name of these people um because unfortunately we don't want them to have lost their life for nothing you know what i mean absolutely so i think that's definitely important so salute to our carefree black girl yes all right so this week of course is still the timeline's crazy timeline is still crazy right now the timeline's heated about j cole and no name did you guys check out the song (sighs) checked out the song what's it called it's uh snow Snow on the bluff Bluff. i checked it out with y'all to keep it a a i I just yeah i just heard it i just heard it like recently like within the hour it's (laughs) funny because like i was just you know chilling and last night 
I'm like, what is this? What is what is happening? J. Cole? J. Cole, you, like, right. Like, like, what he do? <laughs> right. Last time I saw him is at a protest. You know right. what I'm saying? So what he do? Like, So, yeah, I checked it out. Yeah, last night I heard it. Um, but, yeah, we were just listening to it. Y'all. I'm going to be the one to say it. I think the timeline tripping a little bit. <laughs> the timeline definitely got it. There were so many think pieces to this from every angle to, like, uh, Talk about queen as a slander to like not do that. All this stuff. I was just so confused because when I heard the song, I was like, this is kind of typical J. Cole. He sounds really dope on it. Yes. He's telling his story. He's he's giving us the imagery. It might be a simple generalization. It could be about someone, but I didn't get that it was just about her. I didn't get her like he's attacking her at all. Right. Well, so for those who may not be aware of the, the like the entire background story. Mm-hmm. No Name is a, a a woman rapper from Chicago, <clears throat> um, and she's a she is what we would call quote unquote woke, right? And I'm not saying Woke-ish. that to be funny, woke, right? I'm saying that because that's really what she is. She um she has a book club, you know. She she advocates for certain things on the timeline and things mm-hmm. like that. Very vocal, very very vocal about you know what she stands for about black and, people, honestly. Right. Right. And I'm not mad at it. You know, that's kind of what I've been familiar with her mm-hmm. about. Um, she wrote a tweet and we got a timestamp here. Uh-uh. Um, it <laughs> says five. Well, whenever this was taken, but this was five twenty nine twenty. So this was oh, late May. Ago. Right. OK. Recent. Um, and this is and if I'm not mistaken, this was put out a day right before J. Cole went out and. We oh, see yeah. protesting. Right. So the, the tweet that she put out was poor black folks all over the country are putting their bodies on the line in protest for our collective safety. And y'all favorite top selling rappers not even willing to put a tweet up. Niggas whole discographies about black plight and they're nowhere to be found. Now, obviously, that could be about anyone, right? Anyone, right? Totally. <laughs> I think. If we want to keep it real and if we narrow down the rappers who are the real rappers who kind of talk about those, you know, those things that, you know, there's a couple of people. It could be Kendrick. It could mm-hmm. be Cole. It could be. Happy you birthday, know, Kendrick. You know, right. happy birthday. We love Gemini, Gemini season. <laughs> <laughs> um, but, you know, the, 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 the reality is it definitely could have been about anybody. Now, before that tweet, I think they did have some type of like friendship or you know just they're familiar with each other so i don't know if there's something she that seems happened. like she'll be in his camp yeah like, around his 100 percent, 100 percent. so that's why it's actually a little awkward that they're beefing like this because it's like y'all could have actually probably just called each other and talked about this we didn't need to know about it um but long story short i don't know if they have some prior beef to that and that's maybe why she felt inclined to say something but obviously j cole felt the way about it um Mm -hmm. and he has a reason to he's somebody who did a college and a dream tour like so you know he is somebody who if we're gonna talk about rappers again we mentioned Kendrick, right he's a forward thinker like he does talk about those things so i can see why he may be offended by something like that you know, I can also see why you might be offended by that and think when you've actually been doing stuff. Right. So J. Cole is somebody who's been on the front lines. He's made songs in um, in honor of different black women. You know, he's made Donated songs in honor money. of his wife. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like we've seen Created him protesting. Funds. Yeah. Like, you yeah. know. He is somebody like listen. He puts Helps on concerts artists. for a dollar. He puts on New concerts artists. for a dollar. He rocks with his fans. Yeah, yeah. So he understands. Like, I. It's just a little frustrating that out of everybody, we're getting mad at J. Cole. Now, (laughs) if people want to be offended by maybe how he said, you know, maybe there's something that you already kind of have on your mind that maybe that triggered you in a way. Right. You know, um, I'm not saying maybe the way I'm thinking is 100 percent correct, but I understand where he was coming from and what he was trying to say and the message he was trying to deliver to her. And he's an artist. So, of course, I'm going to do it through the best way I think I could do it, you know? And that's what I think is is the most interesting, the artist part. Like, when did being an artist and expressing yourself artistically become politically incorrect? And mm-hmm. out of all the things like, we're tripping about this, like, we get called bitches, hoes, and all types right. of stuff. Like, 
let's now keep it someone up. says queen and we're like queen, yo, queen no. tone queen tone watch your tone and that's, yo, you that's what they felt they even said watch your tone it's like, mm. okay so we're really going like we have to be really mindful right now because the shift that's happening energetically I think is like really pushing people to this edge of like everyone's on edge mm-hmm. and everything everyone says it's like getting taken to this level of highly intensity. sensitive yeah it's very intense and sensitive yeah right now, and you sure. know what yeah. i i didn't think about this until just now i don't know if you guys saw dave chappelle's yep. 846 yep yep, yep. but it kind of reminds me of the same concept yeah mm-hmm. like he mentioned Don Lemon, but same thing. Like, no name saying, why aren't you doing more? Because you're a celebrity. When uh, Dave Chappelle was saying, like, why do I, as a comedian, a celebrity, have to... What's my voice? Right. The right. streets are talking right Especially now. Especially when you've been using your platform What's, for black people. We're not doing this You've been saying... Right. Yeah, go like ahead. your voice matters, right? <laughs> My voice isn't the only. What are you doing voice. as an individual? I'm right. gonna pop up in these streets with y'all. I don't need yeah. to say, listen. And I hate to do this because I know you love him and everybody else loves him. Little way. Yes. Like, let's keep it a buck. I do it. We, and let's keep it a buck. Like, let's keep it a buck. I don't look to Little Wayne as a role model. Right. I just like his right. music. But no, like, I understand that, right? But let's keep it real. Little Wayne has said multiple dumb yeah. shit repeatedly. He does that on purpose. He has been saying has it to. for the past 10 He's years. So checked out. If Little <laughs> If Lil Wayne drops a project right now, we would go listen to it. You feel yeah. me? So obviously we are on kind of on the side of cold, but it, that doesn't that 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 does not make sense to me. It's like, come on, y'all! Like this is not the battle we should have been fighting today. Like we no. had bigger issues at hand. No. Should we talk about it? Sure. Um, you know, if you if you felt the way and you think that J Cole maybe could have said that in a different way, that's fine. But that's what he's asking of no name. You know what I'm saying? Like let 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 let's 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 put Are it at there. a different time, but at the same time. It, the whole note thing, it says from June 4th. That was mm-hmm. like two weeks ago. He just released it. Right. So this is before all this stuff going on, you know, about women and black women in specific. So I think that's important I to don't mention think, too because I didn't know that. I didn't yeah, the, that. The, I didn't the cover, that. The cover, the funny part is the cover of the song is the lyric that everybody's talking about right now. Mm. And on top, it's like a note, like a note from his notes app and it says June 4th on it. See? Mm. So this is like before all the all stuff, this but at the same happens. time, it's like, I guess it was intentional to drop it. And then it's like, we are literally talking about this right now. Right. Like, right. We're he, literally focusing on this. So I but, can see that point. I can see that. But he also, okay. So he said that he said that in what the first, how many bars? Yeah. He this himself. What about he, he the took rest kind of, of the song? Mm. <laughs> the rest of the song was speaking on the fact that. Okay, we want to educate people. Be mindful of your educational background exactly. and how you are able to why why you think how you think. Right. And yeah. remember that everyone else doesn't think how you think. Yes. Or so you, start there. Or right. have access to the information that you mm-hmm. have. So be mindful and be compassionate towards people that may not be at the same starting place as you. Because that's what we're fighting for right now. Yes. Mm-hmm. We're at we're fighting for equality. Yeah. In the sense of saying it equanimity, really, in the sense of saying, like, we want to be at the same starting place yes. and we don't have it right now systemically. Mm-hmm. So how are you mad at folks for not having the same access of to information as right. you? And you're you're speaking to them in a way as they should know better when they don't. And that's literally why we're in the it's streets reasonable. fighting. And you know what else makes me upset? Why are you patrolling how somebody else is doing their job? Like, yeah. if I, what if I'm not somebody who can afford to be on the front lines? Maybe I donated to uh, millions and you don't even know about it. Mind your business. Right. Because like, it's, not about be it's not about showing it off. out there. It doesn't exactly. matter. If y'all know me for being cold, then you should already know I done did something. And if I didn't, it's going to come out one way or the other. So come mm-hmm. on. Like, let's let, like, let's, let's be logical here. Let's really think. Let's not use our emotions. Like, <clears throat> Let's listen to what he said and mm-hmm. let's listen to the delivery of it, right? And let's break it down from there. So, and like, again, it just comes down to like people 
he's asking for somebody to just de- like we want the information just please deliver it to us in a way where we can enjoy it and soak right. it up if you, it doesn't matter if you give me a plate if it's not cooked well I'm not gonna be able to eat it and digest it or present it or in present a way it. right so right. it's the same concept it's like you have to present things in a way where people actually want to listen to you and not be turned and, off and not be turned off if I feel like you're gonna shun me or make me feel like a dummy because I don't know this information I'm not gonna ask you for shit <laughs> I'm not gonna ask you for nothing. And why are celebrities no. are saviors? Yeah, <laughs> like yeah, exactly. That's, not- that's what he was saying at first. Like I'm a regular dude. I went to college, but I'm a regular dude. Right. My, My IQ, IQ is regular. average. <laughs> I am. Av- I know about rap. <laughs> <laughs> I know about writing and basketball. I went to like, college. Like, <laughs> of a ba- he went to basketball. Right. Like, yeah, basketball. basketball. Like, oh, you didn't catch it. I came out as a rapper, not as a CEO. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I guess he is a CEO, though, right? Yeah. Still but, a business like, man. But, you know, yeah, I can really appreciate No Name though because she is very vocal. She's very vocal about like right. radical, yes. radical stuff like abolishing police, abolishing prison, and I think that's really important. And then she has her whole her own book club. She ain't mean no harm. So really? I really yeah. think that people should get hip to her and what she's talking about. You don't necessarily have to agree with her, but like right. just kind of understand where she's coming from too. Like she, Absolutely. she's helping. She's trying to get people to think aware. wide and expand. She's, sparking, she's giving them the knowledge. Right. She's giving books to people who are incarcerated. She has a book club. You can sign up and get books every month. Like yep. she has, I think she has a physical store. It might not like in Chicago. So like, like she's she's helping. I don't think she's her intent is to be negative either. Exactly. Yeah, so. And that's why I think look at the whole of the yes. song. And they're not talking about a, the same thing. Right. Not yeah, a bar both. of a song, right? <laughs> Educate yourself. <laughs> but you gotta know I'm not playing. But you want ice when you play games. But you like my body up in flame. Spoiler <laughs> alert. Uh, I know the timeline alert. spoils yes. everything. Yeah. Spoiler like alert. This, you it might want to matter. forward this like Ooh. maybe five, ten minutes because <laughs> we going to talk about yes. it. <laughs> but, um, you know, Lawrence going to be a little daddy. That's what people were <laughs> guessing. I predicted it. I they predicted were guessing, it. Yeah. So, yeah. like, this yeah. scenario has already happened in my real life. Oh, my okay? goodness. This, is, this has happened in my real life. <laughs> so, you saw this coming. Thing, like. So, when, I, when it happened, I was. I was Issa. It happened to me. Uh, I was Issa. And I'm like, damn, girl, I know how you feel. Mm-hmm. Everything's good, right? <laughs> like, mine wasn't as deep as this. Right. Like, so I don't yeah, feel that depth. Yeah, like, yeah. my ex that I was with for years and, like, he bought a ring for me. Like, it wasn't that deep. Right, right. But it was right. like, yo, I really like this person. You know? <laughs> yeah, like, I this, really has, this really has potential. It was like, mm-hmm. er, baby on the way. Damn! Not even that the baby's here. Right. The baby's on, like, the way. Way. on the way. On the way. You gotta go like, through fresh. a whole process. A whole pregnancy. Like, visits and what's and... wild though is like you think, okay, okay, maybe we can, you know, maybe. Hell no! Because that baby <laughs> turns into a human. Right, that fetus. And the first couple of years is delicate. Like you gotta be around, right? Huh? You, you don't. And then that guy doesn't want to be a jackass. Like First he of all, the be kid a dude. can't leave his mom for like six weeks. <laughs> like, so <laughs> you got to be with the mom. Like, you can't right? have this kid by yourself. Because then so. you don't want to be a bad person. It's a very sticky situation. Yeah. Because you don't want to be a bad human and say like, I don't care about you. And if and you have a baby, conscience, because hmm, right. we got some deadbeats. We're going to get out there later. But, <laughs> but then it's like, you have this woman that you saw yeah. yourself with. Yeah, you that's saw deep. your you know life what? flourishing. And I think with. that's so important for men because yeah. men don't think like that. Like the average man. But it's the kind of don't think like that. It's kind of threatening too because I yes. remember watching like some stories like okay, Lil Wayne again. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's like was it VH1 like his whatever. Mm-hmm. He was talking about 
when Toya got pregnant. He oh, was yeah. like, she's the love of my life now. Right. Like, she just had my baby. So what if he just one day, she has his baby, and it's just like, <laughs> I'm sorry. Like, exactly. Sh- this, this is my family. Yeah. This is literally exactly. my family I created. Exactly. So that is like a, that's something. That's real. You got to worry about. Like, because you so don't know. Even if they have history, like. Exactly. Oh uh, my God. It's so heartbreaking. So it really hurts think, my feelings. What do y'all think? How do you how do y'all think Issa is gonna handle it? And how do you two parts? How do you think Issa is gonna handle it? How do you think Lawrence is gonna handle it? Well, Issa, I think she's been very about herself and getting herself in order. I think she may call it quits. Like mm. she gotta focus. She's been really working really hard to get herself together. This is fast. true. So and Nathan high. in the cut. <laughs> Ooh, <laughs> my guy Nathan. And Daniel somewhere out there in the cut, 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 cut. Yo, someone, one yeah. of my homegirls they said, bring back. they thought Daniel was at the end of the episode. I yeah. said, if that would have been Daniel. Guy. Girl, blah. That, that, that's the <laughs> cutie buddy. He rolled for her. He nah, rolled for her. That's the buddy. That's nah, the right guy. That's guy like, we gonna have some fun. Comedic like. relief. <laughs> <laughs> she done hired him. <laughs> <laughs> that's hilarious. Um, no, Nathan, no. But see, that's that's why I think it's going to be an interesting situation. Because, like, it would be different if Nathan, one, don't forget Lawrence is leaving. Yeah, he's going to So Cisco. he's going. And Issa is getting her career on. Which I love. She's Can I just prospect. side note? The yes, fact that she's doing should. events. Yes, exactly what we all do. I, I think love it. It's horrible. Step by step. So relatable. All the everything. Right. The emotions. All of it. All yes. the emotions. All the everything. Scouting locations. Like, I love it so much. Her Easy. assistant is so cute. Shout out to Issa, um, baby. But yeah, so like Lawrence is leaving. Nathan just bought a whole business. So he ain't going nowhere. nowhere. LA. Right. Then they're going to be working together because they got this space in the back. Mm-hmm. So I just see this. You know how that office space can get <laughs> <laughs> after them events. <laughs> and I've been there, done that too. <laughs> I'm just saying, let's um, keep it real. So, you so, know, it is really all about time. I think Issa going to play is smart. Cool. I think Issa's going to play it smart. <clears throat> this I is think. her test. Like, yeah, yeah. Yep. What yep. are you going to do now? You're a mature Issa. You're independent. You know what you want. What are you going to do? And you've kind of already been through this cycle in a in a way. Like, yes, yeah, with They've Lawrence. been through some yeah. stuff already. Yeah, they've already. She's been with him. So you're going to always uh. go through things until you learn your lesson. So. And Nathan called him sometimey. <laughs> And so Nathan, and then the fact little that Dirty Nathan, Mac, I love a little good Dirty Mac. I was, I ain't go, I got a whole playlist for Dirty Mac, and I ain't gonna hold you. I like a good Dirty Mac every now and then. But and, honestly, at the end of the day, Lawrence didn't do anything wrong. And absolutely their not. Their relationship he handled everything correctly. Was solid. Like they started back up smart, and they yep. talked about it. They communicated. Communication they solid. So it's like maybe they are both mature enough to deal with this. Yeah. And like can work it out. Any, I mean, not. Not to say anything bad, but a lot of people don't have full pregnancies, so mm-hmm, you never mm-hmm. know what could happen. Mm-hmm, to right. just say, I got to like, just to drop it. Yeah. Because you don't know what happens. That's so true. Because I can really feel Lawrence is like, he's into it. Oh, Like, 100%. he's into it. And, and so that's, that feels... His baby. <laughs> that's, that's another thing that I... You know what? To that point, I think that's going to be the telltale thing. Because I think sometimes... You know, yes, guys being feeling like they're supposed to do the right thing yep. and go be, you know, a dad. That's also a cowardice type of decision. 100%. Because mm. you just are doing what you're supposed to do, and right. not what you feel. feel. And that's a lifelong commitment. Exactly. Bro. So then you end up being resentful. Yes. Acting out in the relationship. And cheating. That's, and the household's not going to be solid. Like, you don't want you. I think it's important that we start seeing healthy relationships yes. with black people. Yes. You know what I'm saying? So you Don't know. just be with someone because they have a baby. Yeah. Yeah, that's like, what that, break that mother sucking like, let's, narrative. Let's, let's, let's break focus on that. Th- yeah, break that narrative. <laughs> okay, babies don't equal relationships. No, they do not. They no. do not. Don't we can have it. different type of family types and styles? Yes, yes. Uh, we'll have have yes. Uh, yes, I come from a blended family, and I love my family. So. Yeah. Most people do. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
my husband Now your forehead getting busted I run my blip while you gushing Yeah, that's my dick, bitch, don't touch him I'm that motherfucking spouse, bitch Now what you got? I got the keys to the house, bitch I'm that motherfucking spouse, bitch we're talking about guys and surprise, surprise, surprise guys and gals. Uh, we have a wonderful father here, um, representing Father's Day is coming up this Sunday, right? Sure yes. is. Yes. Yeah, so I, I mean, why? Why wouldn't we have the lovely Mr. Wise with us in the building? Hello, Hi, hello, hello. Welcome. Hi. Thank y'all for having me on the show. I oh, appreciate yeah. it. Thanks for coming the on the show. <laughs> like, really? <laughs> your show. <laughs> yeah, our show. Thanks for helping us with the show. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> but without definitely giving too much away of, you know, what I don't want to talk about what you do. Let you know what what is your role? What do you do besides being an awesome father? And we're gonna get into that in a second. Man, I've barely been just rolling with this. Like I am a father, I am a son, I'm a grandson, I'm everything. You yes, know, beautiful. Uh I run a business. Okay. I run some businesses. I have they're all focused on like my uh, I don't know my passion, mm-hmm. my purpose, but also like my big one of my biggest hobby, audio and storytelling. It's cool. So yeah, storytelling. You know. How long have you been into storytelling? <sighs> Bruh, honestly, uh, like my whole life. Really? I'm not even gonna lie. Like, um, the 1996 Olympics. That put a little date on my okay. on me right now. That was in Atlanta too. ATL. <laughs> ATL. ATL. Now, you know Atlanta. Word. Here. And I traveled down here to come see y'all. That's word. That's yeah, word. That's we, that's we, word. Listen, we love you, wise. I love we appreciate y'all too. You. I love y'all too. So yeah, now nah, um during that I bring up that Olympics because during that Olympics um I just remember watching Michelle Kwan doing a little ice skating thing, uh, and I was in my mom's room just like writing this short story. Right. Mm. And I did that a lot, like between like third and like fifth grade to the point where my mom even like took one of my uh, stories and like submitted it to a magazine. Oh, that's cool. So when I was like 10, I had already been like a published author oh. writing short stories. Oh, yeah. Hold up. I didn't know this. Yeah. Hey, yeah. Hey, creative book. <laughs> exactly. So as a kid, that was always big for me. Okay. Um, just like, you know, writing stories and stuff like that. Um. And then, you know, as I got older, you know, I went away to college and I don't know, writing just felt like it was cool. But at the same time, there was so much more I wanted to get into and I didn't have like a particular outlet for it, but I built websites. So, you know, I was able to design. That's what I went to school for. So I was able to design stuff for people and that was cool. But once I got back to when I figured out like this, this, this form of like communicating gotcha. uh, i was into it so yeah. yeah this podcasting oh. is definitely um a beautiful thing oh yeah i love, love it. it i absolutely love it it's yes. why you know we're all together yeah yes. yes. friends off of that yeah for real nah for real so. and it's such a skill yeah it's definitely a oh skill and we appreciate you you actually you know you actually do very very well with your job um oh, which you. yeah no i'm not saying that just because like i've like I would refer people to you, you know what I mean? If that if this is something that they're looking to do and get into, you're definitely somebody that I think uh they should know. And you move around a lot. So being a dad, how does how does that work out for you? Uh so I'm I'm in one of those blended families as well too. Okay. I co parent. <laughs> I've co parent. I've been co parenting now for eight years. Uh Love shout it. out to Brianna. Hey Bri. That's my boo. Uh, so yeah. Um, carefree black girl. Yeah, for real, for real. For real, for real. Uh so honestly, um it's like a lot of just communicating. Mm. You know, another one of my skill sets. Yeah. One of my skill sets. As you know? a man, you're blessed with that because unfortunately that's not something <laughs> What's your um sign? Oh, I'm a Leo. Mm. I'm a Leo. What's your moon sign? Do you know? A Cancer, actually. Ah, yeah. okay. There's the so, there we go. Well, that well, no, they're not great communicators technically. No, I wonder what your Venus is. But anyway, oh, that I don't know. I I do have the CoStar app, you know, okay. so I yeah. be you know I pop in That'd there be oh, we on time to, to time. We're gonna yeah. break we're gonna break wise. Oh, <laughs> yeah, I found out the moon sign thing because I was like, yo, you know what? Like, I mean, I've always been like a moody type mm-hmm. person mm-hmm. and. Yeah, it just made it made sense. Yes. Yeah. Really, it's, whew, it just made okay, sense. Okay, so communication. Yes, communication is key. Um and really that's it. Like <laughs> that's that's, that's like the, that's yeah. the hardest that's that is the hardest part, but it's the part that makes things easier. As long as you can communicate like once you can't communicate, 
everything else, it don't even matter what else is set up. Everything else just goes wrong. What do you think um, is the biggest reason why someone is uncomfortable communicating? Mm, I um, like that question. Uh, trust is a huge reason why. You know, mm-hmm. you could just not trust what you're even hearing. So... From the other per so you don't trust the other person or you and don't trust for them people. to understand. Or um, I would just I would I mean just to keep it in that in that space, I think it's about trusting that person. It could be that you don't overall trust people, mm-hmm. but you know, specifically just like if you don't trust what someone's saying, it doesn't matter what they're saying. I see what you're saying. Yeah. So trust as in believing believing someone's word. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. someone's saying something. So Essentially, believing that someone what they're saying is how they're really feeling. Correct. And they're correct, communicating correct. their feelings genuinely. Correct. Ooh, that's deep and that's yeah. real because that's important. Because mm-hmm. you shouldn't try to fake how you're feeling and stuff like that because it's going to come back re- somehow, some way, because it's like a weak link and you have to just kind of knock that out right then and there. Definitely. So that's good. That's good. I think, I think, so uh, would you say being a father changed you as a man? Absolutely. <laughs> Listen. I didn't want to assume, but I would ass- I would just offer of the person that you are, I would assume so, you know? Yeah. In a good way, obviously. Yeah, and I mean honestly I always wanted to be a dad. Like I always wanted to be a dad. That's so cute. Uh at the same time, my life was not built for me to be a dad at the time. So, you know <laughs> That's real. I got some of the wild, wild, wild times out of the way a little early. Smart. And then, you know, I just was like, you know, this is my time. So, like, what's your favorite part of being a girl dad? Ooh. Well. <laughs> we did not prep him with these questions, no. by the way. These are so on the spot. <laughs> hmm, my favorite part about being a girl dad, I mean, for one, obviously, I know I'm a, I, um, a cisgendered man, mm-hmm. male. Mm-hmm. So, I, you know, it's, it's different, you know? It's different. For me, also, it's taught me a lot about myself um, on the flip side, because I see that both my, myself and my daughter, obviously, we have similarities, you know, for mm-hmm. one, similarities in the things yep. that she does, but then also the behavior that I have, how it reflects back yeah. onto her. Mm-hmm. Man, so it's, like, it's like <laughs> looking in the mirror. Yeah, yeah. yeah. bruh. Like wow. That, I think that bruh. is so <laughs> amazing how that is like you really spit out a little you like Mm -hmm. that's why i'm like i don't care what if i get married or not i'm having me a little me i gotta have me a little me you know exactly so that's so cool exactly Mm -hmm. you know so we both fire signs as well too so you know that that's also Um, she's an aries yeah Yeah. she's an aries you know so i don't mind listening to her Lot, they're lot, nice and goofy though that's yeah. a good fire Aries fire are, balance they're, they have so much Sensitive. passion mm-hmm, exactly. and so they're always going to they're never not going to be doing something and they're always going to be doing it with so much with all of their heart exactly it's so genuine I'm like yo I Yo, just try it. Yeah. Try it. Try and it. They will. Try it. Yes. And they will. <laughs> and she so, does very often. I was gonna say, so like, do you see anything as far as like early signs of any like her being interested in like audio or storytelling or anything kind of or like just even computers? Like just like my 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 pops was into computers. So I used mm. to just like being around them joints and seeing him like, you know what I mean? Oh, and that right. that's what got me kind of interested into computers. Yeah. So like do you see her like that in her nah definitely uh i prior to you know me starting um my podcast network i had a podcast for years that actually started like six months after she was born Ah. so her growing like as a as a kid from like you know birth till maybe four or five we used to be in the studio like every weekend that's so cool so (laughs) she was already involved and saw other artists come through and stuff Mm -hmm. like that um but then I don't know. I thought that she would want to be like an artist, like a musician. And she kind of still, she really does. Mm-hmm. You know, she sings in the church choir and stuff like that. Oh, yeah, but for it. her, <laughs> she grew up on YouTube. Uh-huh. So she's actually, <laughs> she's actually a YouTuber. She got okay. a show called oh. Brianna Toy Stories. Okay, oh, go ahead, girl. Yeah. So That's three cute. episodes in, man, she, <laughs> she on it, she on it. So it's, it's our little project. She, Love it. she puts together her episodes. So she does do her own storytelling. Production. And yeah, I so just smart. shoot, I shoot it and she's stuff. She's really smart, yeah. 
That's yeah. so cute. Yeah, so it's our little project, That's you know, she's awesome. eight. You know, we do our we, own thing. The, the our generation is, is yeah. going to because our generation is different from our parents. Like mm-hmm. you know, we have technology. We right. have to teach them how to use this yeah. stuff, right? Yes. Like yeah. oh, unless your parents Lord. are already tech savvy, then cool. But most Tell of the time, you got to teach it. your your parents how to do stuff. And we live such time. a different life. Like we have such more of an entrepreneur. Yeah. Like our kids. They gonna be fine. Like they gonna right. top us. You know what I'm saying? Because we gonna be able to teach them the ropes, and they gonna be seasoned. And then it's gonna be some other shit by the time they, you know what I'm saying? They going on. So they gonna take what we, the game that we got, and just elevate it from them. So like that excites me because she's so young. So like imagine, you know, what happens with her within the next two or three years? Like you know, anything could happen. Like it just takes yeah. one person to see that show, and boom, exactly. life change. <laughs> so exactly. I think that's really, really dope that you know you can provide that and show her something like that thank you the one thing i i you know i really wanted to like i know she wanted to have a youtube show she'd be asking me for, for like three years right mm. but the one thing i wanted to make sure was that she didn't see it as like content like you know we uh, in our yes. grown-up age we see it as content uh, I, but i don't mm-hmm. i didn't want i want her like yo you creating your show nah yo do your show i'm gonna just i'm gonna record it whatever you do we can we can cut it up i'm gonna make that i'm gonna what's, make it happen what's the reasoning behind that if you don't mind me asking yeah, work. So it's fun. Yeah, yeah, fun. yes okay exactly you know like when you're a little kid yep you ride a bike it's not exercise you having fun. You're riding the bike. You chilling. This is true, but it's exercise. Man, you getting in some. Get me on a bike right now. <laughs> I'm, I'm lazy. Trying to, I'm thinking about yo, how, how far we gotta go. <laughs> Man, we gotta go we on the street. Right. You know, so so and that's, that's what it. ultimately turns mm-hmm. into your your career as an adult. What, yeah. you, do what do you like naturally to do? without mm-hmm. even being asked to do it? Yeah. Exactly. That exactly. Is so. so, so cool. That's been pretty cool. That's definitely been pretty cool. Um, I had her on my podcast actually for um the first time ever. Uh, she's my my most latest episode. Okay. And we did play, that out. we played this little game. Oh yeah, Indie Creative Ledger is our podcast. <laughs> uh, we played this little game uh where she asked me five questions and I asked her five questions. Uh, it was very interesting to say the least. Yeah. It was very Aww. interesting. So yeah, y'all can check that Can't out. Can't say the darndest things. Yeah. Literally, nah, for real. <laughs> nah, for real. Can't I'm sure that a lot of things might have come up about what's going on in the world right now. Yes. So yes, being did. that you are a father in this uh, crazy year, 2020, what are some of the things that you are teaching her to help her, you know, protect herself and like how, know, do you corona and or, how do you explain corona or how do you explain pandemics and social unrest and yeah. civil rights like, movement man, I just, <sighs> so <laughs> it's 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 real interesting you know um i've been struggling i mean actually no nah, i can't even say i've been struggling because last year no actually no the year before last so 2018 um I, she was going into kindergarten or first grade i think one of the two no kindergarten and when she goes into the the class, like maybe like a two weeks in, she's like, "Yeah, daddy, we doing um, uh, what are those drills called? Like the shooter drills? Oh, active, active shooter, shooter drills. Damn. And I'm like, you doing oh, active shooter drills? Like y'all in elementary story. school? That is so, so school used, shooting. Tornadoes, yeah. tornado, tornado drills used to frighten me. So right. like shooting, huh? So <laughs> honestly, shootings just stop because there's not school. Right. Yeah. Oh, so course. to be real, Crazes. the pandemic was kind of easier to talk about. Mm. Right. Hey, wow. Bree, we can't really go outside right now. Mm. People getting sick and Jesus passing away. Christ, That's I never thought about absolutely that. So terrifying. That to was the first it aspect. In that way, yeah. Regard. That was the first aspect. That's how prolific shootings are in mm-hmm. America. Yeah. That that's the. That's the limit. Like, that's the... That's like... Line. They're training mm-hmm. elementary school kids what to do. That's Listen, how terrified our kids already are. If you called me and told me that somebody in my daughter's school had COVID-19, I'd be like, okay, we gonna, you know, bring the kids home, blah, blah, blah. Wow. You call me and tell me an active shooter is oh, at the school? Nah. <laughs> wow. Two different yeah, vibes. Yeah, yeah, Two yeah, different yeah, vibes. Yeah, you yo, feel yo, me? Well, so, right? Yeah, so, so COVID-19 was... That was easy to, 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 um, to handle. Um, for her, she also has an iPad, so yeah. she's been calling her friends. They've been group chatting. She, okay. you know, they've been they've you, been vibing. Was Man. what about school? Like, do you feel um un, like concerned about her education? It being moved 
remotely? Do you feel like that's going to negatively impact her because it's not traditional? Um, I don't think it's going to negatively impact her um, from a education wise. I think socially, though, mm-hmm. things will be more complicated because um you know the just the diversity of being able to go to school like that interaction yeah, yeah, seeing yeah, how important. other people like that is very important it's why i never would I, I don't believe i would ever skip my daughter to another grade because mm-hmm. i don't want her to now be socially outside being that she's in a different age group and all those other stuff i don't right. I, want, I don't want right. that so you know those That's things you have to really look out for but i've heard some pretty promising plans um from our governor uh, and the well, our chancellor regarding like our school program. you're from New York, right? From New York, yeah. So yeah. Cuomo. Yes. Shout, who's shout been doing, his thing. doing the damn thing. Yeah, yeah. I got to say. I got to say. I didn't vote for him in the last, in the last the election. Damn I ain't going to hold you. Thing. He's a Democrat, yeah. yeah. But there was another, there was another Democrat who so actually. president. Yes, yes, yeah. yes. And that would have not been great. She would have not had the experience. Yeah. And that's why experience does so, kids. You know. But I voted. I, I only voted for Cynthia Nixon, actually, so I know because um, her lieutenant governor was my council member, oh. and I know he does a damn good job. But now he's a public advocate, so it kind of worked out. Oh, nice, it worked nice. out, you know. With the social unrest mm-hmm. and the civil rights movement, what are what are those conversations like? Now that has been more interesting. Um, so she came out from North Carolina about maybe like three weeks ago from vacation. And when she came back was probably, I think, the day after George Floyd died and, excuse me, was murdered. Mm-hmm. And since that time, like, you know, I've been watching um, CNN more often and she would be seeing me seeing all of this on the TV. And she's like, oh, well, you know what's happening? And I'm like, yo, police just won't stop killing black people. And, you know, me and my, me and my daughter, we have that sort of comment. We have that. We have that bond mm-hmm. where I can just be straight up with her about it. Like, yo, this is just it. Um, and like, I don't want to tiptoe around it with her. Like, right, you at can't. Eight, at eight, it's like, no, this is really what's happening. Yeah, because she's close to like almost teenage years. Yeah, like, like nah. you know what I mean? Like, she's just she's there. Like she's step removed. Like, yeah, yo, this is this is real life. You know, there could be a moment where someone in your someone in your class passes is killed by the police. Yeah. Point blank. Which you know? is terrible so. once again. Yes. Yes. And once again, I think that is what, that's what I'm. T- it's rough. It's been pretty. You know. And the I live in New York. The fact that you started <laughs> by talking about school shootings. And now the same thread of that baseline is how you have to speak to your daughter who's eight. Yeah. About the civil rights movement that we're in and this all of like that's crazy that death and and hate is what you're having to educate a child about yeah. because of adults. Scary time. So does she have uh any instances of like being aware of her race or like being in school? Does she have any Great ever question. tell you about anything? Well, thankfully, she has not had any, like, racist situations. Um, my daughter goes to a predominantly black school. Yes. Um, she actually had her first white teacher um, this school year. Interesting. Which was interesting. Yes. That's the perfect word. Yes. In the beginning of the school year, I was kind of like, hmm, the side eye. But it, it, worked, it worked out all right, though. I'm not, I'm not going to lie. It did work out all right. Um, but... Yeah, so we haven't had too many situations like that, but she's changing schools this year, and I do not think the school will be as predominantly black as the one she did now, so, right. you know, we'll see. I don't think that's a bad thing. Nope. I agree. No, I agree. Now, especially if she's already had a taste of what a predominantly black school exactly. is like. Yeah. Now, if she didn't, then I was like, ugh, but... As someone who grew up in that same kind of instance, that was literally me once I moved to Boston. I had my first white teacher ever. Like, I didn't, Mm -hmm. I had straight black teachers when I lived in Atlanta. You know what I'm saying? So, Mm -hmm. yeah. 
what you said. Like, it's definitely not. I didn't have black teachers. I went to college. And that's yeah, what I'm saying. I had my first <laughs> black teacher when yeah, I got so to cool. high school. Mm. And it was only one. Yeah. See? I'm going to have, like, so a crazy. coach or something that was black. Um, of course. I had a few. <laughs> no, yeah. yeah. So, I think that. But, you know, I think that that. Um, and that's why I think the conversation of segregation and desegregation is interesting, but that's for another time. Mm-hmm. Um, Maybe I mean New York, by the way, is deep, very diverse, but, but very, the most segregated right. has the most segregated school system, school system in, in America. America. Really? Yeah. Yeah. Oh yes, so schools, I would love right? to talk about that on the podcast. Oh, we gonna I want to talk about that because I segregated know. as hell. Oh, yeah. Cool. And our zip code system is segregated as hell. And you guys have a very high police brutality problem. Yes, we do. Mm-hmm. So that Talk about is it. high that seems like a high correlation. Yes. But um so that's very interesting. I would like to talk about that. Um but it seems like you have this dad thing under control wise. For the most part, you know, I try. I try. It's a, it's an evolving thing. You really adjust every day. It's not like playing a game, but you literally, it's just like, okay, nah, today this didn't work. Cool. I'm going to adjust this for tomorrow to make sure that we all on the same pace. Mm-hmm. Okay. She's growing. Cool. Her boundaries got to grow a little bit. Cool. Let me make That's sure that she, I'm letting her grow, but don't do, don't do too, too, too much. You know, just let's yeah. keep it within. Cause my, my kid, y'all got ask you, she's eight. But she like, like <laughs> wrong. you know, so, you know, you still, I like, especially like where her, where her aspirations of want to be an artist, you know, mm. I, I really try to give her that leeway to just be herself, you know, um, yeah. because that's what you like. That's your artistry. That's like, yeah, that's, that's who you are, so you know, important who so. are the, as a person too. Like, yes. I think when parents hinder their kids and like don't allow them to have some type of damn freedom like mm-hmm. let your kid pick out his shoes every now and then man oh, like step. if the he outfit, wants the batmans if right. he you know like you know you you have to do Paint that your nails Be- yeah like whatever <laughs> like because like we all love Will um Willow and Jaden Smith and we exactly. love them because for that reason, because mm-hmm. they were allowed to grow and be free. Did Care they have peace up in their households? <laughs> of course, you know, that's typical. But I think we've obviously seen that the the picket Smiths have allowed them to just kind of be. So I think that's important. It's gonna it's it's going to be challenging at times because you're allowing her to really have that freedom and grow into her mm-hmm. but that's also beautiful that you're allowing that to happen and you're being aware of you and how you react to that and how that's going to affect her yeah I, listen know? that's 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 the hard part but you know you have to like you have to do it otherwise like for myself personally i try to parent based off of what i know yep my own personal experiences, but in the experiences of, you know, my people around absolutely, me and stuff like that, whatever. Absolutely. She got supportive God, um, God, God parents, actually. Both mm-hmm. of them do really well. So, you know, it's a, it's literally a, a village. A, a village. It, it's a village. It's important, it's man. Would that be the advice that you would give other dads out there? If you had like, you know, give them a little nugget. If I would give, a, if I would give dads a nugget, you know, um, my nugget would be be flexible. Oh, that's that's, that's that's my that, that's you my definitely nugget. Have to adjust. Yeah, yeah. Um, when I, I mean, when I got my when I my daughter first was born, I got uh, two tattoos: one on my finger for wise, the other one on my back. And it basically, the one on my back basically just says like, "You for you to have um, wisdom, you must also have." Um, patience. Yes. Oh, yes. You cannot. Okay. You know, those things don't. You know, you can grow with both. You know, and for my life since then, and I've tried. You know, I'm, I'm still like slightly impatient when it comes down to it in certain spaces. <laughs> you are Leo. But you know, yes, 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 exactly. You know, human, you know, we all have our things. So yeah. It's okay. So at the end of the day, you're you try. And you're, it sounds like you're trying to be aware of it and trying to make sure you know you're. Being aware of it. Yes, exactly, right? exactly, you know? exactly. And I think that's a, I just exactly. awareness is important. Like if you're Key. not, yeah, like if you're not even willing to be aware of what's going on or how you're moving, then how can you do anything? Exactly. So that's very exactly. very very dope of you. 
Well, thanks, Wise. That was an awesome, enlightening, freaking um, segment, especially for Father's Day. So happy yes. Father's happy Day. Happy Father's Day. Happy Father's, Father's Day, Wise. Thank you. Shout out to the black fathers. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Shout out to, Shout to you, Wise. Because in the crowd full of yeses, I see that you blending. Move. I don't fuck with you, baby. Get a clue. Ain't shit. I belong in the zoo. Stuck up. They be saying I'm rude. If I don't get my way, I get an attitude. I never paid attention in school. Never been the type to follow the rules. I'm the boss. Do what I say do. Flipping on me, bitch. Stay on snooze. Not finna play with you, hoes. I got a fuckboy glow. I do what I do and I want. Can't nobody tell me nothing. I was shit on you for fun, hun. You got my leftovers, my crumbs. How do my pussy taste in your tongue? You in the back and I'm in the front. Stay in your place, you love it, he cut. And I'm flexing on the um, next We wanted to one. speak on but about just, this voter suppression real quick, y'all, so y'all understand that it is real, it is true, it is happening. Yes. And it is out there at these polls, okay? So, yes, we are in primary season right now, and uh, Georgia's primary was... Tuesday, June 9th, Mm -hmm. and um, we had a lot of important things on the ballot, including our senator, um, our state senators, our state house, um, our uh, national house, Mm -hmm. sheriffs, locally, Mm -hmm. uh, DAs. Yes. Uh, Who else is on there? Um... Oh, um, like public officials, like they have to do with like electric, electric companies and like your water and sewage and all of that. Um, some school commissioners. Right. So there is local and national and y'all. Okay. So one thing I want to say before that is early voting exists Mm -hmm. for a long time, for a long time. Please, 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 please. If you can. Find out about early voting in your city and your state because early voting is going to be probably the most reliable because it's going to be not crowded Mm -hmm. and they're going to be able to uh, better. um, You're going to cast your vote easier. It's going to be less crowded. There's going to be people that are going to be able to fix problems. It's not going to be able to be cast over here like, oh, uh, you know, we don't have enough poll workers or whatever. Right. And they like put it in the best polling place in early voting. Mm-hmm. They put it in like the most high efficient vo- voting places um, in early voting. So I would definitely recommend early voting. But on voting day, everyone votes, right? And it's not a national holiday, which is stupid. Because mm-hmm. now you were off work. No. Maybe your work will let you go. They're supposed to. Yeah, that's actually a lot. That's what I was told, like, when I had one job. But, like, when I actually tried to, like, flex it, they were just like, no. See? Mm -hmm. Voter suppression. One right there. That is exactly what that is. Like, it should be a holiday because you should be able to say, I'm going to go exercise my right Mm -hmm. to vote. Primary and... The general election. Absolutely. In every primary, because there's multiple primaries. There's going right. to be another one on August 11th in Georgia. And that's really, primaries are like the most important. That's where you get the local, those people who are like, when these things go down, like mm-hmm. the shootings and the police brutality, they're the ones who say, we're going to do this. Right. That's how we're going to fix it. And it's a lot of times that candidate that you really like that really stands up for what you believe is running against that establishment candidate mm-hmm. that is a that is trash. Yeah. Right. And if you don't go out and vote in that primary, then that candidate that you really like that stands up for what you believe isn't going to make it to the next round. And they then need your you're support. Stuck. Exactly. They need your that's grassroots. Then you're stuck with that politician that you think is just like all the other politicians. So primaries are hella important. Mm -hmm. And the voter suppression was rampant in Georgia. There was so much news about long lines, uh, machines not working, people not being able to get in, all this crazy stuff. And it's like, it's 2020, like, why, how is this happening? People didn't vote till technically Wednesday. Yes. At 12, after midnight. Yes. Mm-hmm. There were polling locations that didn't even open until like 8 p.m. The machines weren't even there. That sh- doesn't make sense. This is blatant. Yep. It's blatant. It's like. Voter suppression at its finest. That's the part that's been baffling me, you know, because 
you know, we hear so much things about, oh, we don't have enough money for this. We don't have enough money for that. We pulled three trillion dollars out of nowhere. <laughs> exactly. And somehow, some way, we don't have Georgia. Excuse me, doesn't have enough polling places. People got sent online for five hours. Five hours. I'm sorry, plus. that does not make sense to me. On top of the fact that people have to even stand out, stand in line in general. Mm-hmm. I mean, we're looking back to even Wisconsin, which I yep. mentioned on the show. Mm-hmm. There's a pandemic. You're supposed to be social distancing, yet yep. people don't yeah. cannot even get the opportunity to because they have to exercise their right to vote through all of the other nonsense that 2020 has thrown at them thus far. This is wild. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. And so please look up Stacey Abrams' Fair Fight Initiative. She is fighting voter suppression. That is what she is speaking about when she is out there and you can uh, donate to it you can research it and see how you can be a part of it and um, combat that thankfully we n- saw it in real time everyone yeah. saw it it was national news and we because of us because we participated in democracy it showed and mm-hmm. it showed the suppression and so thanks to everyone coming out. I hope we keep doing that in November. Super we still got to vote again, you guys. Yes. We got to vote our president. Out so. of here. But this yes. was the highest Democratic <laughs> turnout ever That's beautiful. in That's life. Great. That's great. That's beautiful. So, yay. Yes. So we have hope. Let's make sure everybody is like still encouraged for, wait, what is it? November um, 3rd. June, July, August, September, October, November. We have like five more months, you guys. Yes. Stay encouraged. Yes. Stay knowledgeable. Yes. And then early voting will be happening soon. Yep. For that. Uh, definitely. Um, but alongside that, so we have voter suppression going on, that systemic issue happening, and we still have this racist, crazy, scary stories of people coming up lynched, Lynched. literally, in trees. Like, the KKK is real life. Yes. Attacking us because we're being vocal. This is literally, we're really in civil rights movement right now. Literally. Things are happening again. History is repeating itself because we did not learn our lesson the first time. Yep. But the fact it's 2020 and we have lynching going on. It's, and their apparent suicides are not enough public interest. Um, and these are black people, black women, black men. And why, why, why would, would they lynch themselves? Exactly. You're not going to lynch yourself. Okay. You could hang yourself. How would you lynch yourself? But why would it in a tree? Like that is. Yeah, that's not. That's terrifying that this is even happening it's terrifying it's literally terrifying i i had a friend um mm-hmm. well i have a friend excuse me who is a, a psychiatrist and she told me she's like in all of the people i've seen spoken to you know not to put the information out there but she's like none of them have ever mentioned hanging themselves by right. a tree mm-hmm. publicly as something that they as a way that they decide to take their lives that that's has not, not ever way. and that's, so what that's like not in the psyche mm-hmm. that's that's the issue is they're not looking deeper into it they're brushing these things off they're yeah. saying no public interest it's like a silver's right that these people die that's homicide you got to investigate it that's right. your job that's you, your job you know it's weird and i know and i'm not trying to edit by any means but uh, art and media often um emulates life Mm -hmm. and uh watchmen Mm -hmm. that was one of the storylines was that um the main character's grandfather had alleged allegedly hanged himself Mm. and one he was disabled and two it was like nah like that wouldn't have happened and so of course it unraveled or whatever but it's just a um I don't know. It's just a very, um, it's very creepy. It's very scary. And it should be just as outrageous as these cops that are Mm -hmm. uh, murdering us because it's the same thing. It's the same thing. Um, We're being attacked. Yeah. Because no, that's what has happened in the, in the past. And that is what's happening now. And it, the fact that it's not breaking through, 
is really disturbing. Right. Because I don't, I guess, you know, the con suicides are so pervasive, but to be able to just write it off as that just that's is very apparent. It's right. apparent. There's mm-hmm. no way that's apparent because you got to get yourself up there and do that. And then there has to be all these other factors around that. And these people, wait, well, one of them an athlete, like a student, right? Like, well, a successful athlete student. Why would he want to kill himself? There has to be other factors going on. They have to have like that withdrawal period where they're just like, not one. There's just signs that we are aware of at this point. We have case studies. We know. Yeah. <laughs> uh, blessings to our country. And I'm really hoping that by the time we come back, we'll have more spotlight on what's going on. And that journalists are out there taking these stories on and really investigating these stories. Because that's what it's going to take. A journalist mm-hmm. that's independently out there really chasing these stories down. Because that's where... Things like this that get swept under the radar get a spotlight put on it. And um, I really hope that there's a journalist out there that is chasing these stories down because that's how we're going to get attention to it. So, Cause some nights be better with you. It's a hope we kind of mood. And tonight we are. Social media is good and bad. Because we get all the information. We can get it so much at one time. Like right now, I feel like I need a break. So do you guys ever take social media breaks? And how do you do it? Because like we're all creatives and like we all have to promote ourselves. And like, how do we do it? Right. Well, speaking of which, our girl Candy Rain, she just had to go take her social media break. (laughs) She had to do her thing, her job. Yeah, so she went out to DJ at Members Only, which is two chains. Um, Is it a... A bar. A bar. They got crab legs tonight. Every Wednesday, hey. R&B Wednesday. So you guys, yes. if you're in ATL, be sure to check her out. Wow. Every That's Wednesday. So she's going to turn up tonight. So your girl, Nika, and I are holding it down. And by the way, <laughs> shout out to Haley. She couldn't girl. join us this episode either. So, you know, she we hold it down for the squad. We all need a break. Right. <laughs> <laughs> so how do you social media break? Okay, I'm going to say I'm very big on Twitter. I'm always on Twitter. So I really don't be taking breaks. But those days where I, like, don't even think about Twitter, I really enjoy. Like, those days where I'm just in the moment, hanging out, whatever, I'm not even thinking about being on my phone, I enjoy it. But I don't think I ever really take intentional breaks. I have to, I don't even have Twitter, the app on my fucking phone, (laughs) okay? I log out of that bitch because I get on on the browser. Mm -hmm, Smart, smart. mm -hmm. Because I really recently realized that, I cannot. It affects my mood. It does. It does. And I'm like, wow, my mood has really been affected because I'm over here reading people's opinions Mm -hmm. and thoughts. Mm -hmm. And And just in that. Yeah. And that's problematic that I am now shifted. Upset. And upset because of Twitter. Yeah. Lately, it really has been that because it's just been so much, so many angles. Like, we're dealing with a pandemic. We're dealing with race. We're dealing with sexual assault. We're dealing with our neighbors that we have to, like, be aware of. Like, I didn't know this person was doing this. And right. I didn't. Everybody's literally getting called out right now. Right. Like, Canceled. Called out. It's like, do we go outside? Do we protest? <laughs> like, what is going on? <laughs> it's too it's much. in. Tense. so much and the timeline is like it's overwhelming every second is just someone else's opinion about craziness and think mm-hmm. pieces and uh. now they done gave us voice tweets lord nah. they don't gave people voice tweets not now <laughs> <laughs> and it's you know and, and what's funny to me is like i don't know instagram doesn't bother me it just because to me the algorithm yeah. is just piss poor <laughs> it's like what are we doing like is it does it work like that's how i feel about instagram are you yeah are am you I doing this right? 
it's crazy. You know, like I feel like you were on an Instagram break anyway. It, yeah. it right. breaks you. It's like you're on a break, okay? My Instagram's like, I don't like you this week. You're at the bottom of the list. That's it. Literally. <laughs> literally. So like I feel like Instagram, I'm just like, whatevs. And like I have my little community that right. I know is like sees my shit and mm-hmm. I'm like, cool. Um, I can control it a little bit better, but like, and it's not words, it's not people's right. brains. Yeah, exactly. You know exactly. what I mean? Short comments, if anything. Exactly. Right. Mm-hmm. And that's that's where I go to break, if anything. Because between Facebook and Instagram, it's people's thoughts. Yeah. And it's those people from your hometown that are just mm. on Facebook. Well, give me Lord. a Facebook. They have all these long posts. Yes. I've been reading these posts where they're just like so intellectual. <laughs> and they're like talking about all the crazy stuff. And I'm like, oh my God. And at the end, it's like, <laughs> copy and paste it. You read the end of this. <laughs> copy and paste this. I'm like, what the crap? I just read this whole thing. Like, hilarious. It's crazy. Yes. But or like, like a so quiz much for my high still. school. Quizzes. My high school. Like, my high school right now, the like, people from my high school are really divided. It's like crazy. Yeah. It's just like when Obama was like being elected. Like, my high school was just like, crazy. it's the same feeling. Yeah. I've, don't... I've, uh, it's odd because my high school is definitely like that, but I, I already knew not to be following those people. Yeah. So, yeah. I was going to say, you don't block those people from... I don't see it. But, you know, I have followed my family members, and they're all... They experience it. Mm. So, they're showing their aggression and, you know, what's going on. Like, right. if you don't like my post, unblock, and, like, exactly. unfollow That's me. That's what I'm seeing, if too. If you are like this, unfollow me. And I'm just like, wow. Right. Yeah, like, I don't yeah, yeah. see right, me neither. those opinions. Yeah, same. So, but when I post, I try to be in solidarity. Like, I'm a post about black people. I always share black yep. stories. I always share. I always say, like, I enjoy my black experience. That's all you need to know. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Because, honestly, I haven't had any crazy situations, but I know. Yeah. Right. I know. Right. So, exactly. Exactly. No, yeah. I think um, I was talking to Quana and I said, I'm pretty sure there's a social media, like, uh, disorder like a mental yeah. disorder mm-hmm. and if there's not a specific one for Twitter I would be surprised if there's not one in the updated manual that they use to diagnose mental disorders because mm-hmm. like I said it's one it create it, it's a for the users that are like on it and like on it on it like we were talking earlier about like J. Cole and No Name and these think mm-hmm. pieces that are coming from that it's like yo like Take a break for real. Yeah, <laughs> this is yeah. not supposed to be so deep at all. Like we used to be talking about some. What happened to the trending topics where it was like, "Would you do this?" or something in three words, like, right. like, like scale it back. Take all those and put it in your diary mm-hmm. or journal or something. Like, Tumblr, Tumblr, oh, Tumblr. Yeah, that's like a journal. It's but see now it's become become this weird window of people looking into your brain. Yeah, yeah. yeah and people want to be Twitter celebs. They yes. want to be Donald like the one mother they look fucking <laughs> Trump. <laughs> mm-hmm. The Twitter blank. president. He did literally this. and figured he did this, and that is what's the craziest. He made Twitter into this place where people think they really have a voice. Yeah. Cause he's our president. Yeah, I mean he exactly. amplified he amplified a lot through Twitter. And he has like forty five million followers. Like, and they made like half of Twitter follow him when he became president. Crazy. Nothing. She's just Donald Trump, <laughs> who was on TV forever. Right now he's Donald Trump. In so, the White House. Uh, what do y'all do to like get your mind off of that when you take your breaks? I've been working out more. I've been trying to like train myself to get to five miles walking. Hey, that's, that's awesome. awesome. <laughs> yeah. That's going to happen it. soon. I can dig it. Um, I don't know. I've been binging Real Housewives of Atlanta because drama. They're hilarious. Right. <laughs> it's like I really wasn't paying attention before, but now all the memes I get now because I'm like, watch. <laughs> <laughs> it's funny. So, yeah, I take my mind off of binging reality TV. I turn all my st- I turn the TV okay so I'll turn the TV off literally that's smart I meditate a lot more now mm-hmm. uh, my dog we go on walks fave and actually I've been reading or listening to an audible well I've been reading physical books um, about things that I'm interested in and they're yeah. not all like um, 
a lot of them are like educational. So it's not like something that you have, like I can flip around in it. I don't yeah. have to read it straight through. Mm-hmm. So I can read different books at a time. So I don't have to feel like that's a reason why like I stop reading books. And then I've been listening, I've been reading this audible book or listening to this audible book. Y'all, it's dope as fuck. Ooh. It's a fantasy book by mm-hmm. this black author, Tommy yes. or Tommy, T O M I, a DJ. It's her last name. She's African. Um, well, her origin is African, but I don't know where she's born. But she's super cute. And mm-hmm. um, it's like a fantasy novel. So kind of like in the genre of like, you know, like a Harry Potter. Like Ooh. you put it there. Are they like dramatic when they're talking? It's just one lady. <laughs> And she does it really well. Like yes. it's a, it's based in Africa and it's based in this like a uh, fantasy place, but it it's kind of fantasy, but it's kind of real too, because it comes from like African spiritualism. So it talks about like Orishas and your Ashe and like all those Ooh. things that you hear about and all of the gods and goddesses like, Ash- you know, anyways, um, it's awesome. So I've been really like listening to that and like turning everything off and just like getting lost in this freaking fantasy book about black children with magical powers. And then I just finished the first one. The first one's called Children of Blood and Bone. And I'm on the second one now. But so I just finished the Children of Blood and Bone. I read the author's note. You never read the author's note, right? So I free. Well, I listened to it. I was listening to an audible. (laughs) The damn author's note, the book, she wrote the book. Because she had to get out her feelings about fucking police brutality. Mm. Are you serious? As a heart attack. Wow. The whole book. Because as I was reading the book, I'm like, uh, this is paralleling exactly what's happening in our world right now. Yeah. But you're just using this fantasy world with these people that are magical and these people that are non-magical. Right. Yeah. Oh. That's yeah. That's really dope. It know? is hella I really dope. want to check it out. And it's bl- it's all black people. Like you're in yes. Africa and it's fire. So that's what I've been doing. I and used to have a friend that would edit audiobooks. He made like seventy five dollars an hour. Like, Yo, you can Whoa. voice an audiobook and yeah, make- and at his job they some people were the voice actors. And yeah, like edit. I was trying so hard to get on. I kept emailing them. I never got on. <laughs> There's a website. There's a website, and you can go and you can audition for audiobooks Ooh, yes. and make like two hundred dollars an hour. Right, like wow, shit's crazy. But yeah, I mean, on the on the on the point of actually, um, you know, just taking social media breaks. Mm-hmm. Honestly, I like you, Sydney. I took. Uh, Twitter off my phone, the app. Um, I was laughing because I took it off my, took the app off, but I'd be logged in on, right, on the browser Chrome all the time. Just, you know, <laughs> pop in, pop out. Uh, yeah, but you know, but that's, that's helped me though, because, um, you know, I don't see my notifications. I'll yeah. go in, I'll say something real quick, retweet a couple things, pop back out and go do something else. Um, so that's been valuable. I also have been using Instagram as well too, to just, Love it. Yo, let me just see a couple of pictures, you know, you know, little, little tap tap, right? Quick scroll and put that put that down as well too. But I personally, I've been diving more into audio stuff. Like, yeah, I've been diving into my hobbies. Mm-hmm. I've been calling people that I ain't talked to in a while and just yeah. chatting, yeah. you know, and just being more present and you know the people's faces that I'm actually yes. physically in front of, especially being now that with, with COVID and on and all that, we don't really get to see each other as much. Exactly. So, yeah. It is nice to see people now, right? Yeah. Yes. yeah, yeah. <laughs> Even my mask on. <laughs> Even right. my mask on. For a little while, look, my, my ears be killing me. <laughs> right. Killing me. People are still out here working, though. So mm-hmm. we're wrapping this up with our girls to watch. Our girl, Lele. That hey. girl, Lele. Turn up. I hope, are they giving her a show? I don't. I hope so. I hope she gets a whole show. She'll be our next Kiki. Yes. Just imagine seeing her now and growing up. Like, That'd be fun. Ah! That's all I'm I ever so wanted proud. as a child. As a thir- what is she, 13? Close. Um, she yeah. was 12, 13. Yeah. I wanted a fucking Nickelodeon show so bad. Wow. I watched Nickelodeon religiously. I all my, that. Kenan and Kel. Hello. I sent Even my audition with the tape stuff. in. Zoe, Zoe 101. I sure did. I sent my audition tape into all that. I had my mom record it for me. Ooh. <laughs> That's what's up. Didn't get it, but uh, you know, it's okay. <laughs> hey, hey, you try, you try, you try. I love, I'm so glad it's Nickelodeon, not Disney, low-key. Yes, because Disney low key, low key. things don't go great. Their, their child stars all go. <laughs> mm. Mm. 
So yeah, that girl Lele is holding it down for all of us. Our our childhood dreams. Yay, that girl Lele. Maybe she's gonna be like a. Do you think she's an act? Like she's acting. Like, I know she's doing her rap thing. Probably she probably has like a a good acting ability. She has to be the star, not like the sidekick. No, not at all. The star. Probably then you shot. know you you know now they're gonna be getting hella black folks to do things. She definitely. Gonna do you be think a this star. is a move? I feel like it might have already though. been in the yeah, Smart it might have already been in the works, but they were like, Smart. let's announce we it. We really tried so hard to get that girl Lele on the Carefree Black Girl Cookout. She was interested. And that would have been so cute. But Next I just love just to see how these young stars blow yeah. up. And she's one that's really like, you know, she know what she, what she's about. Like, yeah. She know she got her little lip gloss, her little squad. Oh my god, so cute. And she be rapping about like like she know how to rap. She right. can rap. She can. She, she can, can rap now. So just imagine when she crosses over mainstream. <laughs> I know because we haven't had like a like a young rapper that was a like, girl. Little Bow Wow. Well, no. That, yeah, that no, was no like girls. a girl. Yeah, Raven. But we all know her as a. She was That's a rapper. Good. She was. She had like, a rap wait, song. What did she have like a song. Yeah. yeah like one but song. she was like a kid. Kid. But yeah, her yeah. thing is acting. There's I none. dig it. No, I don't think there has been. So fingers crossed for that girl Lele. We're I feel like the future is is bright, you know, regardless of how, of the storm right now. We're rooting. And um hopefully when we join you guys again, we'll have more positive things to chat about. And uh we look forward to it. Keep your head up. It's your girl Sydney. You can follow me at Sydney underscore rich C I D N E E on Instagram and you can also follow my tarot page and meditation page at Arcana A R C A N A dot A T L. And you guys it's me Nika and you can follow me at Carpe Nika on Twitter and Instagram. Be sure to follow Broke to Dope on Twitter and Broke to Dope dot com on Instagram. It was good to be a guest on the show. Again, thank y'all for having me. Um for those who are looking for me online. It's at the real wise. That's Twitter, Instagram, Facebook. I'll be on TikTok now. I got a little TikTok now. Oh, My TikTok. daughter got me into TikTok. So cancel. Yeah, TikTok. <laughs> Thank y'all. It's your girl DJ Candy Rain for tuning in. Make sure you follow me on all social media platforms. Um, DJ Candy, spelled regular, and then R A I N E. Um, like I said, that's on Instagram, Twitter, Mixcloud, SoundCloud, all of that good stuff. Uh, thank y'all for tuning in. Black Lives Matter, baby. And make sure you follow Carefree Black Girl on all networks and platforms. Uh, Twitter is CFBG Pod. And Instagram, it's at Carefree Black Girl underscore Inc. Shout out to Haley. And Candy Rain. See y'all. Ain't broke sick. Yes, I work sick. Like an anaconda. If you ain't caking, you get snotter. I'm Quana, the young prima donna. He be lurking. He ain't seen the ass. It's perfect since his mama birthed it. I be power surfing. Spot this do this game dirty. LBJ going 30. Bitch, I'm going 30. Bitch. Shake that ass. Bounce that ass. Shake that ass. Bounce that ass. Shake that ass. Bounce that, uh, shake that, shake that ass.